Hello everyone and welcome back to Fable Lands and let's just continue where we left off with Hockey last time. Alright, well, let's go for it now. Let's just see how this goes. Uh, uh, we do have that. So let's consume that. Okay. You wait until nightfall, then creep towards the mound. Uh, maybe I should use a uh, health potion as well, honestly. Alright. Ah! Fail theory roll. This is not gonna go well. You are spotted by a spear armed guard. It gives an ululating cry of alarm. I have never heard that word before. And many others swarm out of the mound. You have little choice but to run with a pack of deadly killers close behind. Desperately, you try to lose them in the night. Uh, of course. <laughs> We're caught! Oh boy. They're too fast. You are caught and overwhelmed. You end up as food for scorpion larvae. An unfortunate end to your adventures. Yeah, I do have a resurrection deal, so... Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so this time I did lose everything. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, I didn't lose my weapon, no. Okay. Well, let's bring that. Eh, uh, let's... Uh, let's grab 300, maybe? I guess I'm going to want to uh, set up another resurrection arrangement. Leave the temple. Do you have anything of use? Oh, do I have... I still have my arrows, okay. Although I could probably use some more, to be honest with you. Oh, I want both of those. Okay, so let's buy that one. I'm gonna want to get that, so... Let's grab 150 so I have 100 with me. Honestly, let's just carry that one around as well. You never know. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, well, now that we're here, we could actually go to the forest. Oh, wait. I just lost my uh, thing, so no, I can't. Uh, excuse me? I don't care. I actually have no use for this because I don't have the staff. And Let's go back to Yellowport. Guess I'm gonna have to go back to the Trude. Oh boy. Eh, okay. Well, let's go back here. Uh, actually, let's do uh, this. That is expensive. I'll leave the temple. 
Let's go there instead. Okay. Found another sword. <laughs> Leave. Hopefully I can uh, get another staff. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, so that one has failed now? Huh, okay. Well, I guess we can try to do that one. Go back. Hmm. Don't really want to go back down there. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, let's go to the main road. Well, that was uneventful, which I guess is good. Talk to a fisherman. Yeah, it's just the same as I got before. Hire a boat and go fishing? You can hire a fishing boat. Ah, okay. I do not have uh, the money. Although, can I? No, I can't. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah. Let's sell that. Let's leave. Uh, I never went to the countryside before, so let's go there. You are crossing an open expanse of flinty ground. A few herds of sheep roam the low hills. You meet a shepherd. Meet a shepherd who gives you a wolf pelt. Nice. Make a move. Uh, hold bleak. Sure, let's go to the mountains. The cold bleak mountains look as inhospitable and forbidding as their name implies, their frozen flanks climbing high into the icy clouds. Climb into the mountains? Uh, it is a tough climb upwards, but not impossible. Unfortunately, I don't have climbing gear. Climb up the old-fashioned way. You decide to give it a shot and test your rock climbing skills. Well, I didn't really have a choice because I couldn't go back for some reason. Hey, successful scouting roll. You clamber up until you come to a mountain track. It rises up between a cleft in the rock ahead of you. A man steps out in front of you. He is clearly a soldier, but his clothes are rough and ready, as if he had been living in the wild for some time. Talk to him. Who is the rightful ruler of Sakara, General Grieve Morlock, or the son of the old king, Nergan Corin? Ah, I think this is the guy that fled. So I'm gonna say Nergan Corin. That is fortunate for you, says the soldier. Several archers stand up from their hiding places behind the rocks overhead. Another soldier, a captain, comes up to you and introduces himself as Captain Vorken. He is clearly one of the old aristocracy, the nobles loyal to the king and the old regime, before General Marlock and the army seized power and executed the old king. Vorkung tells you to leave the mountains. You have found a rebel base, men still loyal to Nergan Corin, the heir to the throne. Nergan went into hiding when General Marlock killed his father and took control of Sokara. Sure, convince Captain Vorkung that you are on his side. Ah, this is probably not gonna work. Uh, wait, you attempt to convince Captain Vorkung. Oh, it worked! Successful charisma roll. Captain Vorkung is impressed with your claims of loyalty to the rightful king. He decides you might be useful to their cause and you are led blindfolded uh, through a secret pass to a mountain stockade. King Nergan gives you an audience in a makeshift throne room. He is a young and handsome man who seems committed to his country. He leads you aside into a private chamber. 
I have need of one such as you, he says. Yellowport groans under the yoke of Governor Marlos Marlock, the brother of General Green Marlock. If you can get into the palace at Yellowport and assassinate Marlos, I will be eternally grateful. Something tells me this will be another hard quest, but sure, might as well accept. Very well, says Nergana smiles. When you are ready, the king wishes you well and you are led out of the stockade and back down to the foothills of the cold bleak mountains. Uh, leave. I... Very hard, yeah. <laughs> I figured as much. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Nope. Uh, farmlands. You are crossing an area of fertile farmland where much of the food is grown to feed the army. Little farmsteads dot the landscape and the plowed fields have the appearance of a patchwork quilt. Find an item. Find some leather armor. Make a move. Northern Road. You are on the road between the citadel of uh, Velis Corin and Fort uh, Merith. This is uh, quite rarely traveled. The military guard posts are few and far between. A sweet spring heals you up of up to three. Well, I wasn't hurt. Make a move. Uh, Eastern foothills. You have come to the foothills of the spine of Harkoon. The great mountains rise up majestically before you, their snow-capped peaks wreathed in clouds. You find a clear, cold stream where you drink your fill and replenish your water supply. Climb upwards? Climbing the spine of Harkoon is no easy task. Climb the old-fashioned way. Yay! Successful! After a grueling climb of some hours, you are halfway up the side of the mountain when you discover a thin, precarious path leading up. You take a swig of water from your canteen and proceed up the path. After a while, you have to stop to take more water. To your horror, your water supply has turned sour and undrinkable. Oh boy. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that to work. Gamely, you drive yourself on, but your thirst is becoming terrible and soon you will be unable to continue. If you go on, you might die of thirst before finding a water supply. Uh, this feels like like a magical thing. Uh, do we risk it though? Turn back. You have, uh, yeah, okay. Come to the foothills. Uh, disaster Bay. That doesn't sound very nice, but sure. You arrive at Disaster Bay, where you find a community of fishermen. Judging by their wealth, they also make a living by other means. You suspect by looting the ships that get wrecked in the stormy waters of the bay. A man offers to take you by boat, safely through the bay and north to the port of Yarimura on the Great Steps. It will cost you 50 shards. Sure. The fisherman drops you off on the coastline outside the city of Yarimura. He refuses to take you into the harbor. I'll not pay their damned harbor tax, he growls at Yarimura. Yarimura is a young city. Its buildings are finely constructed houses of wood and stone with pagoda-style roofs. The clan of the White Spear, exiled from the east, ruled the city. A hundred years ago, civil war raged in Akatsurai. The clan was forced to flee in its ship uh, to the west. Unable to find refuge in Sokara, the clan founded Yarimura, the clan's fiercely loyal samurai warriors easily suppressing the local nomad tribes. Uh, the current uh, daimyo, the chief of the clan, is Lord uh, Umonosu. He dreams of the day he will return to Akatsurai as a shogun of the empire. To leave Yarimura by sea... Yeah, I don't know. Um... Okay. So, who do we have here? 
Tambu, the great spirit of the plains people, has a temple here. The invaders, however, have uh, brought the religion of Akatsurai with them. Their temples can be found in the Plaza of the New Gods. The Plaza of the New Gods is a large oval, the floor of which is covered in a mosaic of multicolored bricks that depict a woman whose face shines like the sun, the chief goddess of the pantheon of the Akatsurai. Uh, around the oval are several magnificent temples. Their mirrored spires and gabled pagodas sparkle in the sun. Many people throng the plaza. Priests and holy men, hawkers and hucksters, samurai and nomads. You learn a little about the gods of Akatsurai from them. In the plaza, there are temples to Nisoderu, goddess of the rising sun and queen of the other gods. Uh, Yuntoku, Lord of War, Nai, Sender of Earthquakes, and Amanushi, uh, Master of the Night. You also hear a rumor that the Temple of Nisoderu is looking for a courageous adventurer to help them with a task. Well, let's go there first then. The Temple of Nisoderu, Goddess of the Rising Sun, is built around an open courtyard with a great shrine in the middle, covered in lit candles. Inside, a hundred nuns dressed in flowing white robes and wearing elaborate wide-brimmed hats sing a continuous chant in praise of her. The goddess is depicted everywhere as a beautiful woman with a face that shines like the sun. She represents not only the sun, but piety, faith, and purity. The nuns of Nisoderu are skilled in the ways of petitioning the goddess to bring the dead back to life. The high priestess can give you an audience. Uh, speak to the high priestess. The high priestess is covered from head to toe in bright white silks. All you can see are her eyes, like twin orbs of amber. She tells you that the mirror of the sun goddess, a holy relic of the temple, has been stolen. She believes it has fallen into the hands of a steppe nomad one of the horde of the thundering skies and asks that you retrieve it for them. In return, the temple will reward you. Only a holy man or woman is worthy enough to handle the mirror, she adds. Accept the mission. You accept the mission. You leave the high priestess and return to the city. Well, actually, I wanted to go here. Uh, seek a blessing. Sanctity, sure. Uh... Leave. Let's go and see Tambu. The Temple of Tambu is a wooden structure built to resemble one of the round tents of the nomads of the steppes. Tambu is the great spirit of the steppes. When the northern lights flicker in the sky, it is said that the spirits of earth, sky, and water are dancing for him. Tambu's blessing is said to aid those who travel across the steppes. Uh, I guess I already have a scouting blessing. Uh, talk to the chief shaman. The chief shaman is a short fat fellow he, who is dressed in furs and covered in strange tattoos. If you are an initiate or if you donate 10 shards to the temple, he will speak with you. Okay. He can tell you about... Ah. Surviving on the steps. At night, it is cold enough to freeze your blood. Always take good furs, he mutters. Be prepared for hard hunting and do not make an enemy of the nomads any nomad. But most of all, do not offend Great Tambu. With that, he falls silent, indicating that the audience is at an end. Okay. Uh, Yuntoku? The Temple of Yuntoku is built to look like a gigantic granite helmet. Yuntoku is the warrior that never sleeps, the war god of Akatsurai. He is worshipped as a great general and leader of men. He is not a god of battle, but of the art of war. Okay. And yet he had a charisma one? Okay. That's interesting. Nai? The Temple of Nai is a sturdy, low blockhouse. Nai is the god of earthquakes and of ferocity in battle. Inside, there is a huge idol of Nai as a mighty warrior, shooting his arrow of earthquakes from his bow, the Shatterer of Worlds. The idol is hollow bronze, and the priests of Nai climb inside during important festivals. Using huge metal hammers, they create a thunderous booming in honor of their god. 
As the bringer of earthquakes, Nai is to be placated uh, rather than worshipped, but many warriors uh, pray to him for aid in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, I guess I have combat as well. Okay, Amansushi. No, not Amansushi. <laughs> Amanushi. The Temple of Amanushi is a dome painted a night dark blue and speckled with golden stars. Amanushi is the walker in shadows, the master of the night. He is the god of thieves and assassins, and as such, his temple is frowned upon by many Akatsuris. Uh, normally, the temple would not be tolerated so openly, but Amanushi has been the patron god of the Clan of the White Spear since time immemorial, and here in uh, Yarimura, he holds pride of place. Yep. Okay, leave. And honestly, I am going to end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!